Welcome, Emmanuel Casablanca, an unknown uh, name for us. Until a few weeks ago, I uh, received a mail and then I looked at my uh, own record collection and I saw we had an album from you on uh, online and uh, that was damn good. And oh, the email you. also told about that you were uh, busy recording your second album. Uh, well, the second album is done. Um, it's coming out February 2nd, 2024. It's called Strung Out on Thrills. Um, there's, uh, yeah, there's been, uh, kind of like juggling, like, uh, who, who and how this record is going to be worked. Um, I think it's, um, it, it's, uh, did you get to listen to the new record? No, not the new, the, the old one, uh, just the old one. Okay. 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 Yeah. I can make sure, uh, send over a private link of the, uh, the new record. Um, I think, uh, I think you might be interested in that, uh, maybe even a little bit more than, uh, than the uh blood on my hands record uh it's uh it's 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 a very strong album um yeah yeah um well back to the first one you had some help from some pretty cool names in the industry uh, i saw cat riggins we met a few times when they were playing in holland but also eric gills and yeah. he is he's on fire lately isn't he yeah, yeah. I met Eric uh, years ago. I was um, playing with uh, uh, American R&B singer, singer-songwriter uh, Lauren Hill, and um, Eric, uh, uh, back in 2014, um, I, I got a gig playing with her, the Highline Ballroom, and then I did some uh, touring with her a bit of like Australia and Poland and stuff like that. Um, and uh, yeah, and that's where I met, that's where I met Eric. Actually, um, that was the that was actually the second time I met Eric. The first time I met Eric, Bernard Fowler, who sings with the uh, Rolling Stones, he had a gig um, uh, at a at a space called Sullivan Hall um, uh, in here in New York City. Um, and I went, uh, Bernard told me to come by the gig. So I went to the gig. I got there really early during the sound check. And um, that was my first meeting Eric. And um, there was a guitar player, another guitar player playing with him, a guy named Robbie Davis. Robbie had invited me to um, a couple of gigs. He lived in L.A., but he was in New York quite a bit. Um, he invited me to um, uh, a couple of gigs out here. And then he had asked me, you know, Robbie was playing with Lauren and um, he had asked me if I had any time or availability to play. So that's 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 kind of how I started. And when I played with Lauren, then Eric was also playing guitar with them. But I, you know, um, I so when I started out, I was playing with a lot of like R&B singers, a lot of hip hop artists. Um, um, yeah, yeah, you name them. I was <laughs> in the room with them, you know. Well, we saw Bernard Fowler uh, when he did a um, David Bowie tribute show with all players who went who, who played with David Bowie, like Kamine Rojas, and uh, he was one of the singers. The three singers did the job, and he did a perfectly job. Absolutely killed it. Yeah, yeah he's got an incredible voice. So. That's why I met him. But but um, back to you. You're not a one trick pony. You're um, you're not. You told all uh, people in the hip hop you 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 were absorbing a lot of people and a lot of music to to make it something of your own or is it blues or how do you call it yourself now? Is it strictly blues rock? Are you influenced by everything I mean, you can? It's it, it's all the blues, you know what I mean? Like no matter how you hash it, like if you you know you, you do your homework on the blues, like the it, the blues is the is, is the basis of all. Uh, contemporary American music. Um, and and um, what I'm doing is very much so blues. Uh, it's a little bit, you know, I have a lot of uh, influence that comes from elsewhere. You know, I'm not from, you know, I'm not from Mississippi uh, or some farm or whatever. I'm, I'm from Brooklyn. So, so, you know, I grew up, you know, I grew up watching, uh, you know, going down to Fulton Street and watching Biggie Smalls, uh, 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 battle rap with uh sauce money and jay-z and those other guys you know uh the early, the early days sure yeah i mean uh, you know I, I saw it i saw it in person you know what i mean like i saw it when i was a, you know when i was a kid running around so i mean with that being said like 
um, you know, that's, you know, I grew up listening to that. My mother's a music teacher. She grew up, uh, when I was growing up, she was doing like, uh, she, she, she was the, the, the church choir director. She also, um, played a, she was trained classically. So there's a lot of classical piano and classical vocal going on in my house. Uh, um, you know, my father was a huge James Brown fan, you know, so it's, it's, yeah, you know, I had it coming from everywhere, you know, I had the, the hip hop, the classical, the the soul, the old soul. So, you know, it, it, it was there. And when I started playing um, the guitar, you know, I couldn't afford like guitar lessons or anything like that. So I was teaching myself and I met this guy, um, this guy who lived a couple blocks from me. He would sit outside on his stoop with his guitar in the middle of the day and he'd just be playing the blues. And to me, I didn't care what genre of music uh uh, um, was being played. I just wanted to learn how to play the guitar, you know? So I was like, uh, I asked him if we could jam sometimes. He told me to come over every day. So that's what we did. And um, here we are. So um, That's not only, I saw that you're also a part-time painter. Um, there was a, a, a movie star in the making. Let's let's put it that way. There was a, a, a new movie that's going to be released next year, I saw. Um, I saw also you're producing uh, music for uh, commercial videos. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm going to be in an owner Tuchel film. Um, it's uh, the working title has actually changed, so I, I don't want to call it something that it's not going to be. But as of right now, um, it's a, it's meant to be. It's not finished filming. Um, it's meant to. Um, they're kind of. I guess everything's just now letting up with the strike here uh um the writers I, I think came to an agreement and um um i i, I don't know this is I'm, I'm i'm new to this world of uh <laughs> of, of acting i've done some commercial stuff here or there but i you know the movies and stuff like that that's a whole other um that's a whole other thing but essentially it's a it's like a a riches to rags to riches story about a blues musician um yeah uh as uh y you know there's uh he, me and myself and owner the, the director of this film um we've had a um many and many and many he comes to my upstate house sometimes and and and, and we just sit back and, and we talk we kind of pick apart you know because what the movie is supposed to be about what this character is supposed to be about and it's you know, there's been movies on the blues before, um, but there hasn't been a lot of stuff showing what contemporary blues looks like. Um, and I think because contemporary blues in the mainstream, like the bigger name blues guys, it hasn't really changed. Um, uh, it's 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 kind of the same, like you're hearing this term, keeping the blues alive. Like I hear that all the time. Uh, and you know it's bullshit. Like there's no, uh, uh, there's no keeping the blues alive. Like they're it's, they're killing it. You know what I mean? Because like without with with there's no humanity. In order for humanity to stay alive, there has to be evolution. You know what I mean? Like yes. nothing can stay alive without evolution. You have to go from one place to another. When I'm hearing these, you know, not you know, and don't get me wrong. There's a there's there's a couple coming acts coming up. I'm listening to some of these guys, and and they're actually, you know, they got the balls to 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 do something. You know what I mean? But like for the most of them, it's like they're trying to. It's like this boys club, and they're trying to um, to 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 blend in, and it's like you know, like evolve become something bigger and greater they did it with various other forms of roots music listen to jazz listen to country music country music you know miley cyrus isn't doing what waylon jennings was doing in the, in the, in the 60s 70s you know what i'm saying other yeah. forms of roots music has have have, have taken that leap and blues you know it, blues is going to end up an artifact in a museum if we keep keeping the blues alive you know because because we're not we're, we're we're destroying it when we don't take a chance on some of these uh guys who are not just blending the rock and roll in it but blending the soul you know on my, on my new record you'll hear you know i got i got i got uh i got Pr professor griff from public enemy on my record i got uh i got poet i got poets on my record i have like it's 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 very much so the blues but I, you know 
And, and my favorite is is the down home dirty blues. I'm a I'm, you know one of my favorite guitarists in the world is Joanna Connor. Oh, um, yeah. and I she's have a nice. uh, she's a yeah, queen. Yeah, I mean I, I have Joanna on two songs. You know the very first song I and then and, and another song um another song I have called Last. So, um, you know uh, it's 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 it all blends in very well in my personal opinion. But I think um, forget about me. You know just the genre as a whole like we got to start taking a leap on some of these things or else again, there's not going to be evolution because the funny thing is a lot of these blues gigs, these blues festivals, they don't book me, you know, Um, they don't, you know, I don't play a lot of those gigs, but it's, it's, it's interesting enough because these, these, these bigger hip hop festivals, these soul festivals, these venues, like with some of your mainstream R and B artists, I'm talking about the guys who are doing movies and making substantial sums a night for a show they, with no hesitation like they they got me on I, I got a, I got my calendar is full you know what I'm saying like I'm not okay I heard the record I thought that's absolutely an uh, an artist that you could do very well in Europe no problem oh you think so I think oh, so I'm, I'm uh, convinced uh, so uh, to me but to come back at that you're you're the same opinion as me uh, keeping the blues alive is the worst slogan uh, somebody could ever come up with because if i have to attract some youngsters with a slogan somebody is dying which essentially yeah. is saying <laughs> keeping the blues alive isn't very attractive for youngsters to dive attractive. into it's not very attractive and we're not implementing um we're not implementing the new nuances um, again, country music is they're they're killing it. Like country yeah. music is is I, I don't know if you're a country music fan, uh, but I, I I do listen to a great deal of country. And you know, aside from the skill set, you know, I think it's one of the last great forms of songwriting, if, in in my opinion. Um, but aside from that, what they're calling this this whole outlaw country or this alt country, alternative country, it's it's brilliant, you know, and yeah. it's it, it's been going on for about. To, to my knowledge, 10 to 15 years now. Um, and these outlaw country artists are just getting bigger and bigger and, and 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 the genre is just continuing to explode. And then you got the pop country stuff going on. And I I hate the pop country stuff, but at the same time, like the, the genre will never die because there's this continual uh, level of evolution um, in what they're doing. It is the same as blues country. They're telling a story that's important for them and what happened in their lives. That is blues originally originated also from the hardships of working in the country or whatever they had. And that's still the same. Yeah. Is that important for you? They have a story to tell in your songs. Yeah. You know, I think there's, um, I think that there are, are, are stories um that need to be shared i have a song on this uh upcoming record called the farm that um again no singles or anything have been released yet but um for for the radio promoters and the publicists who who have actually heard this record so far there you know that's one song and it also fits into like the americana genre um but that's one track that a lot of i'm getting a lot of great feedback on in regard to storytelling um, but additionally, there should, you know, some stuff is just fun. You know, you got some 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 stuff for people to sit back and think about, and then you got some bullshit that you just want to have fun to, you know, and 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 that's you know, I'm a huge like uh I'm a huge Tupac Shakur fan, you know. I uh, I grew up on Tupac. I remember where I was, I was 12 years old when he was killed. Uh and I remember exactly where I was standing and exactly what I was doing. Um and that's how you know, that's the impression that he left on me. And, and I remember listening to his songs, you know, there were a lot of things going on um, uh, in America, in the United States during that time, as as there have been, you know, it's nothing new, but specifically in, in urban and black communities, you know, they, they you know, Rodney King was beaten, uh, uh, Tupac spoke on that, that kind of thing. It was a big deal back then because we didn't have cell phones to take a video of everything. So when oh, they, yeah. that was on camera that was just a huge that was that was a huge thing um it is the, can can we all be friends can we all just get along yeah yeah, yeah. That, that one yeah but, 
you, you know, the, the the reason that it resonated such with me with, with 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 Tupac is because nobody was speaking for me back then, and then this guy comes around, and I, and and it, and it resonated with who I was, how I was living. Um, um, uh, it was it was it was it was a very integral part of 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 of, of my upbringing, and and, and, and you know, it, it, it's crazy because I'll write songs and I'll work on stuff that. Um, uh, the influence of of Tupac Shakur in my music, uh, I, you know, I don't even realize it until um, until I'm I'm writing or recording it until it comes out. But you know, he had those songs that where those stories were really strong, and then he had then he had some stuff that was you know, then he had songs like I Get Around, you know, like it was you know he had his fun stuff and he had he had his 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 more meaningful songs. Um, so again. Uh, the stories are important, you know, to answer your question, but at the same time, um, it's also good to just enjoy what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, it could be else. Um, if I'm, uh, I read your bio on the website and I read between the lines that it could be all wrong with you if you didn't have made the right choices at the right moment. Is that right? That you tapped in the creative side of yourself more than the destructive side. Well, you know, it wasn't between creative and destructive for me, you know, um, it was between creative and not tapping into my potential, I think. Um, I wasn't, uh, you know, yeah, I've gotten in some trouble in the past, but nothing crazy. You know, I don't have that same story. You know, I went to college on a basketball scholarship. I, I quit playing basketball. I transferred to another school. I went to two top 50s in an Ivy League school, you know, so I graduated and had a career um I, and i was making a lot of money i was working in finance i was working on wall okay. street cool. uh, uh there was um i i had that i wasn't happy with that i left okay. and i went and ended up actually working for a hip-hop record label bad boy records um with a uh, sean p diddy combs um i worked there and then worked for his sean john fashion label and, and then i worked in fashion for a, a, a bit of a stint um, I was never happy doing any of that stuff. And I feel like I knew, you know, I always played music and I was always around music because my mother, um, as I mentioned, she was a music teacher. Um, I, I, I don't know if it was something, if I was just conditioned to focus in on living this, you know, having a career and doing whatever, um, or if it was, um, yeah, it, I think it was just, it was probably just fear. I didn't know how to go about doing um, what I wanted to do uh, or or chasing my dreams, for instance. I was more, I was, I was, I, I would like to think of myself as a risk taker, but I was more of a calculated risk taker. So um, I wasn't, you know, I was really, you know, I have a lot of friends here in, in the city who, uh, who, were, who were actors at the time, uh, still actors uh, and doing well for themselves. And and musicians and, and 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 I see these guys and they're like, you know, they're at the park drinking at two two o'clock on a Tuesday. I was like, you know, what's going on here? Like I'm sitting, I'm sitting <laughs> in the office, you know, um, and you know, I it, it, it I I wanted to know how they manage their lifestyle to the extent where they could, you know, do these kinds of things. And 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 they were working, but their time frame, you know, they were working at night or whatever. Um, but, um, you know, that was just so odd to me at the time. Uh, sometimes you got to take a leap. You know, if you don't jump off the cliff, you don't know if the umbrella is going to open. <laughs> uh, that sounds uh, very risky, but I uh, I get your point. <laughs> yeah. And now um, the, the sophomore album is almost ready off to be released. I'm, I'm very uh, pleased to hear some songs and and play them on our radio station especially the farm you made me very interesting in that song now uh, um, but career-wise is it hopefully for you the opposite way as process uh, as uh, played in the movie from big stadiums 30,000 people to the small bars and now from the small bars up to the big stadiums uh, can you repeat that question again of your, of your, in your career, would you like to be the opposite way as you portrayed in the movie? Um, like I, I, I prefer, I prefer like, um, I don't know. I just, I prefer to just 
be portrayed as 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 who I am. I, I it's it's I I want to be more than a musician. You know, I'm getting involved in like a lot of philanthropic things at the moment, um, and 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 I share that because um, you know I, what I'm for every for every show that I play during the month of November for Giving Tuesday, I'm going to be donating 100 percent of all um, netted revenues to um, a, a non for profit of choice. Um, but I, and the reason, again, the reason that I share that is, um, I, I don't think it's just, it's, it's not enough these days to just be a musician, you know, um, you have to, I, I feel like you, you, you got to do more and give more to the world. Um, you got people like Paul McCartney and Jay-Z and all whomever else who they've done their music thing, but they've also expanded into business and into philanthropy and things like that. And, and I, and I really look up to that model. Um, I think, yeah, I, I don't think it's just enough to just, um, to, to just play music and go home. It's a very self-serving ideal way of thinking. And um, I would like to share more of my gifts. I've been given more gifts. Um, okay. Um, and, and, and so I, I would like to maybe just be portrayed I, as, 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 as me, as, as someone who, um, yeah. No, it's, I meant, uh, if you would like to, to play the big stadiums for your craft and, and, and instead of the small pubs, but that is, I think that's a good, uh, point of view. We met, um, Steven Van Zandt from, uh, Bruce Springsteen's yeah. his band. Yeah, yeah. And he has set up, um, an organization to teach and help teachers, um, get music, uh, in the schools so they can teach how to play music, the history of uh, the music, all things. And they give them all tools with that. That what's was the, very what's interesting. That, what's the name of that organization? Oh, I can, I can meet that. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I, I have it at hand, but I will look it up for you. And well, for the people at home, I will blend it in in the video for them. That's absolutely, it's a website. It's for free. You can uh, help them and they give teachers uh, day courses. Um, they help teachers in and give them tools online to uh, teach, uh, for instance, blues music, jazz music, whatever, and in a, in a fun way, in a good way. Yeah. And he was present uh, there when, when he told us about this that's a good way to give something back and he said in the in especially in the united states music education is not given and no, important he said no 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 no. It, it's optional and it should be you know it should be something that is uh uh mandatory and given but um no i i'd love to look into that organization a bit more yeah i will i will send it uh, to you in a few moments um Emanimo. Um, well, we already talked 25 minutes already, <laughs> and the show was one hour with music. I think there's a lot more to say, and uh, maybe we'll come back to you if the new album is released. Send it, please, to us. And, and I want to thank you now for now to, for being our guest on our show for Blue Smooth Radio. Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, and, thank you for having me. And by the time you're uh, you set foot in Europe, let us know. <laughs>